Hey everyone, welcome back to Listen For Real. I'm Jennifer Brown and guess what? Guess what, guess what, guess what? You know, sometimes, well, I always come into these conversations excited and curious, but today is especially important. I am with my dear friend, Cara Lynn Edwards. And she, she is someone unique, special to my heart. And I wanted to do this for a very long time. I wanted to have a conversation with you, Cara, because you, when I met you just a few short years ago, you were someone who something about you in your body, you were like, had this groundedness and just this beautiful awareness about you that when I would be in your presence and typically it was under duress because we were on a project together that was a little crazy at times, you just had this um, command presence, but in the most feminine grounded way. And I love that. And I thought I can learn from this woman. And not only that, I just, I, I need her. I, I need this person as a friend and a sister who I travel through this life with. And I gained that so much. So I, I'm just so happy you're here. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I've been looking forward to this, Jen. Uh, yeah. And a fun fact. So just now, as we were talking and getting ready to record this episode, we were just catching up. And then here's what I love about Kara. She said, I said, let's just take a deep breath together and get ready. And instead of that, she just took it to the best next level and walked us both through this beautiful process of connectedness and groundedness so that we could just get out of our heads and more into our soul and spirit and body. And Kara, I know you know this a little, but the audience has heard me. I think it's the theme of this entire season of Listen For Real is this journey I'm on to get out of my mind, which has run this crazy totalitarian regime and forced my body and spirit into quiet submission. I literally did not know the power and the wisdom that lies within this body of mine and that the body speaks for the spirit and soul, but the mind speaks so much for ego and personality and culture. And so one of the cool things I remember thinking you and I were standing in a parking lot outside of Granite City and we were talking about something. I think it was a future collaboration. And you said this, you go, oh my gosh, that gave me chills. And, and you said, that's like a confirmation, I think of things for you, or you just know, cause you're so connected to your body that you feel things there and you know what they mean. So mm -hmm. this is a journey I'm on. So you talk, let's just start with that. Like, I want to understand that more about you because I think it's amazing. And honestly, it's something I pray for and I yearn for, and I've set the vision that this is something I'm going to get better and better at learning that language learning to listen to my body and understand what it's trying to tell me and, and trust it and trust it. Right. So will you talk more about that? First of all, so that everyone knows what on God's green earth we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I have been far more aware of recently, and I would say in the last three or four years than I ever had been in the past was the wisdom that's in my body that's communicating with me all the time. Um, it's responding to things at a level of intelligence that my brain can't comprehend. Um, but through awareness, I start to notice when it happens, um, like what type of experiences I'm having, what type of outcomes come after these experiences, how to manage like, even my nervous system in a way where, where I'm, I'm really ex exploring the perception of energy through my body. And there's a couple of different ways that I really feel in my body. Um, one is goosebumps. Like we mentioned, mm -hmm. if someone is saying something to me that really resonates I tend to have goosebumps as a manifestation of my 
intuitive resonance with the idea. And it happens very often. Um, a lot of times it's very um, potential related, but there's like a connection where it's not just like one of the millions of potentials that could happen. It's like the path that feels the most resonant with both people, with myself and with the person that I'm talking with. Um, there's this other thing that's happened before too, that happens pretty frequently. I used to ignore it. I used to think like, I don't know what's happening, but I get, um, like a spinning sensation in my sacral chakra where it feels like there's just an intense energy that happens there. And it's, it's, uh, it's like, I can't ignore it. It's something that almost stops me in my track sometimes. And it's, it's actually a very pleasurable sensation. Um, but it's not at all connected to like, you know, sex or anything like that. It's very much, um, what, again, when I'm in resonance with something or when I have, when I have an intuitive impulse or hit that I'm really excited about, yeah. like it expresses, it manifests as that excitement and it happens in my body uncontrollably. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. We're going to get right into it. We're getting yeah. right into it, folks. Okay, Everyone go. just put on your seatbelt because you know, I'm not going to hesitate to talk about anything on this podcast. Okay. So uh, again, sacral chakra, explain where that is in the body. First of all, sure. for those who don't know. Yeah. That is your second chakra from the bottom up. It's okay. beneath your navel and inside. So it's pretty like it's deep in the middle of your body, but below your navel. Okay. But the, the chakra below that, is that more, which would be more our sex organs below yes. that? Yeah. It's like womb space. Okay. Okay. Creativity so, and yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm wondering, I just had this happen on retreat last week. I was talking with someone. Okay. So just stay on this journey. Okay. <laughs> I was talking with someone and I'm trying really to pay more attention to the feelings in my body. And what I'm realizing is I may be having a conversation with someone and they, we are either connecting in a resonant way or they're talking about idea. I'm very, very in tune with and excited about, or, okay, something could move forward and there's great potential. And for me, it does feel almost like that feeling of being really turned on. Like, yeah. you know, when it's sexually and your body feels like it's on fire. Okay. That feeling. Yeah. Okay. But I have always just attributed that to, um, it, it will, because probably because of culture. Oh, well that's sexual. And then I would go and I'm sitting with a woman having a conversation. I'm like, Oh my God, maybe I'm attracted to women. Maybe it's not men. I was literally having this conversation in my head that you could have that kind of energy. And I immediately translate it to sexual. I attach meaning to it because of the culture I live in, that that means I'm attracted to that person sexually. And therefore I am a lesbian. I mean, literally, this is what my mind does. It goes, this is what, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I happen to be married to a man. So you could see why that might be problematic in yeah. this moment, in this moment in my life. Okay. <laughs> so let's be clear, but I, can you, so this is the exact journey I'm on is going, oh, Jen, what if that's just your body saying yes, yes to this idea? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am meant to play a role in this. I am meant this. I'm so passionate about this. Okay. So is that a little bit in my unique take on it? Is that a little bit of what you're talking about? Exactly. Exactly. In fact, you're, you're literally the first person that I've told that to, and they responded to me, like, I have the same feeling and it feels like, oh my gosh, there's some sort of like sexual thing happening. And then it's kind of confusing it started happening to me and I noticed it when I was in my twenties. I remember oh. the first time it ever happened. I don't really remember the situation, but I remember the scene. Like I was in my car by myself getting ready to leave for work. Uh -huh. And I'm like, what's going on? Am I having a <laughs> mini orgasm by myself? Like this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and I'm in my car. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no, like, here's the cool thing is that since I've recognized it as being, there's this like, you know, it's, 
it's an energy center, a very strong energy center, very tied to femininity and creativity. Yeah. And since I've made that connection, I've started to, whenever it happens, I pause Mm. And I let the energy move through my entire body. I don't constrict it because a lot of times what happens is like, it's intense. It's unexpected. You try to keep it contained. Oh, right? totally. Yeah. And it's like, that's oh what God, I did. Happening. What the heck is going on? Yeah. Whereas once you know, like now that this is really a creative energy that's expressing and you can let it move through your entire body. And as I started to do that, I feel like I'll feel I'll feel the sensations everywhere in my body and I'll actually even feel it in the space around me. Like you can consider it my aura. Um, Wow. If I consciously move it there or not really move it there. It's not a, it's, it's not an active thing. I don't move it. I just allow it to move. Yeah. I picture you almost allowing, yes, instead of questioning it or, trying to contain it, which is what I was doing that day. As I sat, I can picture where I was sitting. I had to take my hands and put them on the lunch table, almost as if to stay under control (laughs) and stay grounded because the feeling was so overwhelming over my body. And even to the point, I looked across to the woman who I love her and she is a brand new dear friend and a, and just a sister of my heart. So she's the kind of person that could get it. And I said, please don't take this the wrong way. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I I'm on like, I'm on fire right now. Like I know I'm even sure what to do with this energy. And she's just so precious and smiled and like totally cool. And, but I, I felt like I had to contain it. So what I picture is you're saying, instead of that, just trusting it and validating, and acknowledging, like welcoming, hi, you're here. Okay. Take a breath. This, yep, exactly. Yeah. Take a breath. The space is yours and you can mm-hmm. just flow and flutter and go to the expanse wherever you need to go. Um, you are a welcome, you are welcome here. That's yeah. kind of what I picture feeling. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hope I feel that again soon and that <laughs> I can practice that because I, I mean, yeah. it's a muscle that takes practice when you've spent your whole life shutting any feeling down because your mind goes, well, that's not an appropriate feeling. Yeah, That's not, um, that's not what should be happening right now. That's not, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's really, oh, I'm so thankful you talked about that. (laughs) So y'all, in case I didn't um, say we're talking about intuition and I, and well, you are both Tell everyone what you do, (laughs) because I really think it's important. And I don't want to just throw out the words, oh, she's an intuitive business coach, intuitive and business coach. Like that could be like, what? I want you to explain the heart behind your work and what you do. Of course. So I am an intuition and business coach, which is different from an intuitive business coach, um, because an intuitive business coach is a coach that uses their intuition to guide the client. And that's not what I do. Like I teach women how to strengthen their own intuition so that they're self-sufficient. They don't need me to know what direction to go. They don't need me for what's true for them. And they don't need me for clarity, right? And so I help them calibrate to their inner compass so that they can know in their business, I need to go right or I need to go left or something's coming up. And let me ask my intuition where I should go, right? Like, I don't want to be someone else's guide when they have the right guidance inside of them. So then when they figure out where they want to go, I'm right there with strategic support. And then I guide them back to their intuition whenever they feel stuck. And I help them move forward on whatever path they're looking for. So um, for instance, if like, you have resistance about showing up online. Like we have to, like as a business, a a new female entrepreneur, you have resistance about showing up online. Like we have to figure out like, okay, you have this resistance. Do you want to show up online? And if you want to show up online, but you're not showing up online, that's a mindset issue. That's conditioning that has to be deconditioned. If you don't want to show up online, but you're trying to show up online because you think you should, we're going to go back to your intuition and say, tell me what I need to do. It's like simple questions that you can ask. And, you know, 
then when they get that answer, I'm going to help them create a strategy to execute a path to, you know, to that specific destination. Wow. I love this because you know what? There's such a humility and a grace in what you do. And here's why. It would be very easy. You're a wise woman. You have an incredible business acumen. You are, you've got a lot of wisdom and experience. Okay. It would be very easy for you to probably intuitively guide other people in what they should do. But yet what you do is absolutely empower and equip them to get totally tapped into their internal Mm -hmm. guidance system. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be the be all end all. Kara is the guidance. She's the bomb. You know, there's many coaches that are that way and they're very talented. I don't discount that. But I love that there's just this beautiful humility and grace in going, no, yes, I have all this power, but I want you to have the same power because you already possess it. It's just Mm -hmm. helping you tap into it. I love that. Thank you. But you know, and I'm going to be totally honest, like I don't have psychic level intuitive abilities. I don't, I am really practiced at using my intuition and I've never tried to use my intuition on someone else's desires. It's Mm. all like my desire. What does, what's the path to my desire? And I can't even begin to, to understand someone else's. And maybe if I tried to apply it that way, maybe I would be able to apply it like my intuition to their right path, but they know their right path. I don't know their right path. Yeah. And, you know, so that's, that's kind of one of the main reasons that I do it is, is because it's like, I don't believe that I, that I can possess the path to your desire as specific as it is. Like we both, we, we both might be wanting to build, you know, a seven figure business and we both want that, right? So there's this destination that we both want. But how do you want to feel on the path mm. to that? Who do you want to meet? What experiences do you want to have? Like our desires are so nuanced that there's no way that I can say, here, here's a five-step path to a seven-figure business, right? Like right. I can't say something like that because my five-step path, now let me just say I don't have a seven-figure business, but I'm saying this is a goal, right? Like my five, my five-step path is going to be different than someone else's five-step path. That's it's right. going to be based on what I want at the core. Like my core desire is not the seven-figure business. My core desire is the way the seven-figure business is going to make me feel. Mm-hmm. And every little nuance along the way is going to be different for me than it is for you. Like if mine is like, oh, you're going to get to stand on stages and talk in front of thousands of people, but someone else is petrified of doing that. That's not part of their desire. So I shouldn't put it on them. Anyway, that's a little tangent. No, I love that. And and that leads me to say, let's define some of these terms because if you're, let me out myself in the fact that, you know, remember the premise of this podcast is the fact that I have been in an echo chamber for most of my adult life and I had a very narrow mindset. And so from that space, I would have told you anything intuitive, anything was way too woo-woo, was a lot of BS, was uh, soft-headed, highly suggestible people. (laughs) You know, I mean, I just, I I was just very judgmental and I really put people in their boxes. And I came to the understanding that, that that no longer served me or anyone else. And it was just simply not, that was not me. That was not who I am who I'm an eternal learner. I'm super curious. I love people. I just freaking think people are amazing. I love human beings and how magnificent and fearfully and wonderfully made they are and how unique and intricate all of this is. And so it didn't sit right with me that I was putting people in their boxes and judging them. But I think at that time in my life, I craved certainty and certainty came with dogma. Certainty came with certain things. Mm -hmm. So all of that being said, I really kind of judged all of this and I, and I didn't understand it either. And so by talking to someone else with a different lived experience, with a different um, set of beliefs, a different storehouse of wisdom in them, I get to expand my paradigm and shift it. That's the goal of this podcast, not just for me, but it's, 
it, you know, everyone is in this conversation with us. This isn't just Cara and I, we all have the ability to talk and listen for real, listen deeply to others and expand that. And it's just this wondrous, like <laughs> awe-inspiring thing. And so uh, it's permission. This, this conversation between you and I, Cara, is, offers permission and invitation for others to do the same. So with that said, will you just explain for those who don't totally understand intuition versus like psychic intuition? This is, these are all very different things. So, and I feel like it's a spectrum, maybe. Is that an accurate way it's to exactly put it? Right. It's exactly Okay. Right. Will you explain that? Yeah. Okay. So intuition versus psychic intuition is just a level of ability, right? So like some people are really good at um, analyzing things. Some people are really freaking great at analyzing things. It's the mm. same thing in terms of like, there's just this, like you said, a spectrum, <clears throat> like some people don't feel like they have any intuition. They're on this side of the spectrum. Some people can like s- tell you what's going on in a hotel room all the way across the world. And it really is just a, a, a degree of tapping in. So <clears throat> I want to kind of, if it's okay, first kind of geek out a little bit on the the definition that I have of intuition. Yes. Um, Because I think that the the dictionary definition of intuition is really lacking, really, really lacking, seriously lacking. So intuition is energy perception that is not confined to space-time. It's not based in physicality. And it's the translation of this energy that doesn't require any like pre-processing of the brain. It's not a conclusion that's like based in connections that have been formed in the brain. And I'll explain more, but I think it's really important to first understand like the underlying truth about what we experience as humans. We are energy translators, right? Like we're translating and perceiving energy all the time. This is not woo-woo, this is like actually, you can learn about energy in all different ways, right? Yeah. We perceive energy with our eyes and we call it light and we call it color. Like people don't realize color is an energy, but each color in the light spectrum has its own specific frequency. Mm. So like what do we listen to a piece of music and what are we doing? We're translating energy and we call it sound, right? Sound waves. Our nerves are energy sensors and they're sending signals energy signals to the brain. We touch something hot or cold, we're perceiving and translating thermal energy, right? Like everything is energy. We're perceiving energy all the time. And as much as we know about energy, as much as we've been able to define and measure about energy, same thing with like the human body. I guarantee there's even more that we don't know that we do know, right? Yeah. So back to intuition, while sensory perception is physical and limited to space time, right? Like it has to be in proximity and it has to be in time, like in our time when we are perceiving it, right? Like you're with your physical senses, if there's something hot and you touch it, you're perceiving it in that time. You don't touch it anymore. You're no longer perceiving it. So it's very tied to space and time. Um, That's how all physical senses are. Intuition is a perception and energy that is t- of energy that's totally independent of space time. So these are the things that we that we're sensing. And okay, so sorry, there's a lot to this. So I'm jumping. Yeah, in. no, I love it. The question is like, what energy are we sensing when we're sensing our intuition? And that's part of the great mystery, right? Like we're not supposed to know everything. We don't know everything. You can call it whatever you want. Like quantum energy is source energy, universal intelligence, God, nature. It's pretty undefinable, but we all experience it, whether we acknowledge it or we dismiss it. And that is the really big thing that people Some people don't understand. They're like, I'm not intuitive. It's like, you are actually intuitive. You're perceiving energy all the time. You're just not acknowledging it because it's, it's not like, see it here. It's not taste it, touch it tangible. Right. And that's what we're used to. And the fun thing is that like, we do all experience it very differently. And as humans who are really in somewhat, I should say inseparable from our physical senses, 
we tend to explain our experience of intuition in sensory ways, um, right? Like you see it as an image without actually seeing it, or you hear guidance without there actually being any sound, or you have this knowing, just this knowing that you can't validate with your brain. You get what I mean, right? Yeah. And the way that I personally experience intuition, and again, I don't consider myself having psychic level abilities, but I'm practiced at tuning into it. I experience it really in two primary ways. One is through clear audience. I hear, which is hearing. I hear the answers as though my higher self is actually speaking to me. So I ask a question and I get a response that I can relate to the sense of hearing. Wait. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So I want to just stay here for a minute. So I, I really understand it. Mm -hmm. So you ask yourself a question mm -hmm. and then you hear an answer and you are able to discern that the answer isn't your mind, your ego, your personality, the culture, your mm -hmm. family of origin, right? Yeah. You're able to discern the voice of your intuition that is most true mm -hmm. very clearly. And I'm putting my air quotes up audibly, even though it's not out loud. Yeah. So it's kind of like, um, you see a flash of light somewhere. You don't ever say like, Oh, did I see that? Or did I hear that? It's like, once you, once you experience it, yeah, it's a very clear feeling. Okay. Um, but I don't want to also give the perception that it's an obvious feeling. It's mm. very subtle. Like intuition is um, until you've practiced it a ton. It's a very subtle energy that comes through. Mm. So for me, like there's some people that might be able to do this, but I can't just like be in the middle of a crowded room talking to someone and be like, okay, intuition, what do I need to know? And then it comes through. I got to prime my body, right? I have to, I have to get into my body because you cannot really experience your intuition if you are not in your body, like if you're out of your body. So it's most helpful to, to get into an anchor into your body, clear your mind. And there's a few different tools to be able to clear your mind and like silence that I like to use an, an um, analyzer switch where I turn it up and down. So I close my eyes and I get into my body and I turn my analyzer down, which is like a light switch on my brain almost. Wow. And there's like stillness that happens. And then I feel into my body as to like, where am I feeling sensations of energy that are not like a common sensation? So I notice it as something unique that I consider to be an intuitive sensation. And then I ask a question. I mean, you can ask anything. You can ask like, okay, like, what should I talk about on my live stream tomorrow? And listen, and well, I mean, again, not everybody has it through hearing, like they're not, not everyone's clear audience, right? You might see words. I know someone who like sees the words that she's going to write in a post. Mm. Um, you might just get a feeling or a knowing. Mm. Um, so it's something that you got to prime yourself for in, a, in order to tap in, unless you've been doing this your entire life since childhood and it's like just your thing. Right. Um, but everybody can develop it. It just takes awareness and intention to be able to do that. It's, it's really very simple and very subtle. So how did you discover this? Were you always, um, a kid and a young adult who understood this about yourself? and was in tune with your body? I mean, would you just share a little bit about you mm -hmm. and how you came to understand this or, or discover it or? Yeah, yeah. So I've always been very intuitive. I just never acknowledged myself as that as I was a you know child and a young adult. I just, it was just so natural. And it wasn't, again, not psychic level abilities, but there were things like I had this urge in eighth grade to take summer high school, summer school before my freshman year of high school. And why? I didn't have any idea why at that point. And then I took it. And then afterwards I realized that I could actually take summer school. And I was not like, 
I didn't have my nose in books all the time. I did not study all the time. So the fact that I went and wanted to register for some school was kind of out of character for me. Um, but I went, I ended up going every year and having enough credits to graduate early. So I graduated an entire year early from high school wow. and it put me on a path. And that I think was intuition telling me this is the path that I wanted to be on and going on that path. Um, another thing is I was a very young single mom. And um, when I was in, I would say it was probably maybe sophomore or junior year, they offered this parenting class. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to take a parenting class. I had no aspirations of being a mom at that point. I was just like, this looks like a really cool thing to do. So I took this parenting class, blah, 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 blah. I end up being a very young mom and having that be really critical for me being ready to be a mom. I did not try. It was not something that I intended, yeah. but I was prepped for it. And then like the thing that made me, a lot of smaller things happened along the way too, that I don't even really remember. But um, then the, the one main thing that made me be like, okay, this is actually real is that I had just gotten out of a relationship and I was like, okay, let me date. Because at that point I was a single mom. I had never dated before. I had, I was in relationships, but I never just dated to date. So I'm like, let me date. So it was like November and I'm going on, like I'm online and I'm meeting people online and I'm meeting, going out to dinner with them and like ha just having fun, just having a really good time. And, um, I like saw this message come into my inbox from someone and their username sounded a little bit like they had intentions of like trying to get it, get with me like physically. And so I was like, I'm going to skip that. And so I just kind of went on and then at something called me back to this profile that I had just never even opened the message. And it's funny now because like when I think about it, it wasn't really at all like trashy or anything. It, the username was sincere, sensual, serene. Well, sensual was a trigger for me, right? I was oh. like, oh, sensual? Like, uh, don't you, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. Anyway, I opened this, this message and it was like, maybe just a one line, hi, you, 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 I'm intrigued by you or you're look interesting or something like that. I don't remember exactly. And I clicked on his profile and I read the profile and the entire time my jaw was like hanging down. I was like, oh my God, this he wrote, he, like, he literally wrote this post for me. It was very specific. And so anyways, it, I, it resonated with me and I'm like, yes, this is, yeah, I'm totally reaching out to him. And we start talking and a couple weeks in, it's like, we're really connected. And we decide a couple weeks from talking, like from first meeting. So we met in January by mid or toward the end of January, we were like, we're going to get married. We hadn't even met face to face yet. Um, and I was just like, what the heck is this impulse inside of me? That's like, get married. I didn't even want to live with a guy before I had always lived by myself. I was like, no, to all of the people who were like, move in with me. And now I'm like three weeks in and I have this really strong urge to get married. And so I'm like, this is freaking crazy. Everyone's going to think I'm crazy, but like, I can't ignore it. It was really strong. And so I'm on the phone with my mom. I had not told her yet. And this is, comes back to what we were talking about before we jumped on <clears throat> synchronicities, right? I was on the phone with my mom and we're getting ready to get off the phone. And I'm kind of nervous because I'm holding this back from her because I'm not ready to tell her. I'm too scared. And she's like, but I'm talking about him. Like, he's so cool. And I, I'm so excited about meeting him. And she's like, wait, Cara, do you hear that? I'm like, what? And she puts her phone up to the radio and it's the wedding march. Dun, 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 dun. When do they play that on the radio? Right. Never. Never. <laughs> Never. And my, I know. And my mom was like, oh my gosh, Cara, I think this is a sign. And I'm like, what? Wow. Oh, this is crazy. This is crazy. So anyway, long story short, we end up getting married um, five weeks after we meet online. Crazy like crazy, crazy marriage, right. Or courtship, I should say crazy marriage yeah. too. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but that it doesn't end there. So of course that was a big, crazy thing in my life. Then we ended up moving to California because we both wanted to be there um, with my young daughter, we bring her too, obviously. And, um, he's a musician and I know he's a musician, but 
he had not been performing when I met him because he was taking care of his grandma. And um, I had previously been in a band and had always been a singer and like in like chorus and talent shows and stuff like that. I was always saying, and I was in a band for a short period of time when I was 21. Well, it ends up that when we moved to California, he's like, I'm ready to start a band again. Do you want to come and audition for it? And he's like a way higher level musician than I was. So I was like, oh my gosh, yes. So he ended up bringing me on and I performed with him for six years before I was like, okay, I need to chill. But it was the most incredible thing because not, it's like interesting when you listen to these, your intuitive impulses, it doesn't just take you like to the next step. It puts you on a path. I wanted to live in California. He wanted to live in California too. Now all of a sudden we're living in California. I wanted to be in a band again. Next thing I know, we're performing at Great American Music Hall in San Francisco and like selling out shows. And I am not even qualified for this. Like, I I don't even have, you know what I mean? So it's like, it put me on this path of opening up really the, that's what I'm talking about, like core desires. If people were like, oh, you want to sing? Okay, well, here's your path to singing. These are the X, Y, Z steps. I wouldn't have realized all of the other things that I wanted up to it. So it's like, your intuition knows the path that your brain can't possibly know because there's overview right? Your intuition has overview, like you're looking down on a map. Whereas you in your human with your sense, with your physical senses, your perception is very localized, right? Like it's like you're in a corn maze trying to get to the end. You can't figure out really what turn to make. You might hear like, oh, there's a a signal that's calling me and I can try to find my way there. Mm -hmm. But when you tune into your intuition, you get this overview of like, Okay, your intuition, your inner, your higher self sees the path to everything you want and it communicates to you through your intuition. Wow. I'm sorry. Oh <laughs> my so gosh. Talking. No, I love it. No, that's 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 what I'm after. I want to understand this more because and you said that to me before we started. I was talking about my trip to Costa Rica and the retreat and just all of the different synchronicities that occurred. It was metasynchronous, if that's mm-hmm. possible. And you're like, oh, you're on the path. You're on the path. And I love yeah. hearing that because sometimes I wonder, am I on the path? Because I feel like I'm called to so many things and there's so many inspiring things and new shiny objects. And that's what I've learned about my human design is that, of course, I have an open thing for inspiration and everything is inspiring to me. Um, everything. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So, okay. Here's what I want to do. Let's take a quick break. And then when we come back, I would love to I just want to understand that a little more how, and maybe we can use me as an example if you want, or maybe you or someone else, but how that translates the path and the discernment that comes in there. It's like, I can't wait. So for my example, I can't wait until I've got my intuition finally honed and that muscle has been developed. That takes time, but I'm on the path to developing it but I'm not going to wait to pursue the amazing passion projects and work that I know is meaningful that I'm called to. I'm not waiting till I have all those ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. And so how can I, well, maybe trial and error. I don't know. Think on this. Okay. Let's take a quick break. And then I want to just get into how does this look? What does this look like for us in our lives? Mm -hmm so that we all can just tap into this a little more and just understand it. And since you also teach people to do this in applied in a business coaching setting, as opposed to like, I imagine there's people who teach intuition with regard to personal relationships. There's Mm -hmm. probably people. Yeah. And so you focus more from the business and, and that, that meaningful work perspective. So I want to go into that a little more. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll be right back.
are back. Okay, so y'all, what about this do you go, oh, I've had these feelings or, oh, that's what this is. Don't hesitate if this resonates or it brings questions or it brings a discomfort. Let's walk through that. I mean, this is a conversation that is all of us right now. I really, truly feel that and believe that. Connect with us at will. You know, I always put every which way that you can connect to myself or my guest in the episode notes. But I'm also on Instagram at Being Real Jen. And Kara is at XO Kara Lynn. And that's X O. K-A-R-A-L-Y-N-N. These are in the episode notes as well. But honestly, don't hesitate to check in with us because this is a community and an ongoing conversation. This isn't just an episode and boom, we're one and done. We publish it. You listen to it. It goes into your ears and that's it. I really believe in an ongoing conversation and community and the way in which we can share and exchange. And, and so I'm grateful for that, Cara. So my question is, because you use this so much in helping people from the perspective of how they approach their work, Mm -hmm. their business, Mm -hmm. and you help them again, you don't guide them and tell them what to do. You help them tap into their guide, them, themselves. They know best already, which for someone like me who was there for whatever reason, I'm not so sure it's family of origin. I think it's just something in the way I was brought up, probably a patriarchal type system that taught me you cannot trust yourself. Mm-hmm. You cannot, um, your own thoughts are not to be trusted. So I would always then immediately discount anything that came up for me and look outside myself for all of the wisdom of the ages to hopefully make the best decisions. And so this smacks in the, in the face of, of that notion, right? Yeah. And I'm glad because I'm realizing now how wrong that was and that that came from a lot of damaged systems and institutions that really just it was there. It was a modicum. No, it was a means of control, really, if you think about it. And there is incredible God given, if that's what I choose to call it, intuition that we have that's internal, Mm -hmm. that can be trusted. And so would you just talk more about, and we can use my example of all these ideas I have and this path that I'm on discerning it because some of it it does not make sense in the linear world we are in and the way (laughs) business works. And it feels self-indulgent because I was, I'm so about my essence in me is joy. And when I was on retreat last week, it was like, Jen, you can trust your internal essence and you can follow your joy. And I thought, oh my gosh, is this one of those follow your bliss things? Like what a load of bullshit. And then, because that's my brain likes to say that, but then I thought, no, why not? Why not? Why can't I follow joy and what feels in my essence joyful and trust that? So I've just dumped a lot out here because I'm so clearly in process on this, but how can you work with me on that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So first I want to say that there's like two main reasons why people don't like regularly access their intuition. One is because of the mental chatter. There's like all these thoughts happening all the time. They don't take time to quiet their minds. And so, you know, meditation is a very important thing when it comes to developing your intuition. And it doesn't have to be, I prefer silent meditation because then I can like discern the subtleties of what I'm receiving versus listening to a guided meditation. But people can go in walks in nature and there's still that silencing of the mind. 
The other reason, and you spoke to it specifically, is the conditioning that we receive as children that is reinforced throughout our entire lives. And when you are little and you want to do something, like say you want to do something that your mom thinks there's, or dad thinks that there may be a possibility of, of getting hurt, right? But you, you feel like you want to run across this log or something. You want to do it. What do your parents say? Don't do that. You can't do that. You get in trouble for doing things that they don't see why you're doing them, right? So then as you get older, you're in school and you want to do something and your friends, like, I, I'm really hard at coming up with examples right on the spot, but like, say you want to go um, to this fast food place and your friends want to go here and you're like, no, but I really feel like this, we're going to like have so much fun if we go here and not a mental thing, but more like you have an impulse that this is really where you want to go. And your friend's like, nah, we're just going to go here. And so you're like, okay, well, let me, I'm going to discount that and just go with them. Mm. As you continue to grow, that happens in such small little increments throughout our entire lives where people are like, don't trust yourself, trust what's, you know, logical. Yeah. Trust what's already been done. Yeah. Trust what that person is doing successfully. But the problem with that is that and there's a lot of problems with that. But the one that like sticks out to me the most is that we're not, we're <laughs> so we've got <laughs> I'm, I'm so good at jumping around. <laughs> Sorry. No, but I it, love it. It's good. That's got, how like, I talk. Different types of like uh, I don't even know what kind of buckets you would put them in. I don't want to say consciousness because there's a, that's not really it, but there's just run, go with me here. There's like this victim consciousness mentality that is like, Oh, everything happens to me. And I'm, you know, such a product of everything that's going on. Then people become more aware and it becomes this like manifestor consciousness where it's like, Oh, actually I have very clear control over these things based on where I focus my energy, right? My attention, I should say, because our awareness goes to a point of energy. And then above that, there's this thing that I'm just going to call chowler consciousness, where you're allowing your life force to flow through you unrestricted which means higher self wisdom comes through and you acknowledge it and honor it. And that's a very different thing than manifestation consciousness because manifestation consciousness, there's this conception of like, I need to make this happen. Right. Right. Whereas channeler consciousness is like, I need to allow this to unfold. Uh, very, very different. Very. And it unfolds the right way, like the best, most ideal way when you're constantly tuning back into your essence, like where is my life force? How is my life force wanting to express? You deny it. What are you denying? Your life force. <laughs> like you're denying your own life force when you say, oh, this is the way I'm trying to express. Anyway, this is kind of a long way around. Wait, let me, let me, let me play with that a minute. So as that applies to me right now, Mm -hmm. So are you saying that if I, if my essence and my kind of life force, I'm going to call it jo is joy, mm -hmm. that joy is, is what leads me. It is a resonance. I, I can trust it. It's at the heart of who I am. So if I follow that feeling, of what brings joy in the moment. I'm totally verbally processing too. Mm -hmm. We're both verbal processors, I think. Yeah. And yeah. and so that I it feels so indulgent. Like imagine that. A I know we're supposed to feel good. Like conditioning, conditioning, conditioning. Where we are supposed to feel good. Yes. And and everybody's core desire is to feel good. Everybody's. And they don't all know how to achieve it, right? It's like different for all of us, experience different. But yeah, when it comes to like you and how you want to express, like let's let's go there because I I did a little bit of a tangent there. So okay. so you have all of these ideas, 
Mm-hmm. Some of these ideas could be mental ideas, which are great. Mm-hmm. I'm not like, mm-hmm. I'm not downplaying the importance of the mind. The mind is a fantastic tool, but you have these ideas that could be these like mental ideas. This is a, like from the manifestor consciousness. How do I do this and this and this to get to this? Right. Yeah. And you can have ideas that are more impulsive, intuitive ideas that are where you're being led somewhere. Right. And to differentiate between those, you just have to practice noticing the subtleties of how it feels. And this is why I say like, you've got to get into your body to really, um, to really tune into your intuition because you have to be really aware of the subtleties. So this is what I would suggest for someone who's trying to figure out, okay, what should I do next? What is actually true for me? Not like right or wrong, but like true for me, Mm -hmm. what should I do? Uh, It's the same, very simple process. Every time you want to tap into your intuition, you move into your body. You can do some sort of somatic practice beforehand. If that helps, I really like to do breath work. Um, if I'm intentionally sitting for like intuitive clarity, sometimes you don't have time for that. Anyway, get into your body. You quiet your mind, either turn down your analyzer switch or you imagine yourself taking your brain and like sticking it on a shelf in the corner and just I'll address you later. Mm. You feel into your body. And the way that I teach this often is bringing up paths in front of you. And it's really hard to explain without doing it in a guided format, Mm. but you're basically bringing up these paths and allowing yourself to sense the energy on each path. Mm. And how does this one feel versus how does this one feel? Mm. And really sensing it, not thinking about it. You don't think about it at all. Like that's not welcome in this process. This is very much like what feels like there's a twinge of calling or a twinge of this, this way versus this way. And then you can do other things like you pull up another path and see how those things might converge or might, there might be something totally different. Um, so another time I should, I, I'll, I'd love to guide you through something like that. That'd be awesome. But it's like oh my 15, gosh. 15 minute meditation. Oh my gosh. Show. Yes, please. We're booking that. Let's just book that. I can already tell you. Yes. So it's almost like I'm looking for contrast. It sounds like a little bit. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. two paths. Like right now, I feel so drawn as you were talking, I closed my eyes and I can picture again, I picture creating space for women. I picture a group of women. I picture this beautiful energy that's there and the nurturing and nourishment that's happening and that we can bring and deliver so much in that environment. And so Mm -hmm. that feels good to me. My mind wants to jump in and go impractical, impractical. (laughs) Don't you know how hard it is to fill retreats and blah, 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 blah. And then my mind goes, no, I know there are women who crave and want this and are drawn to this and their hearts will bring them there. Right. And so is that a little bit of what you're talking about? So right there is a picture, two paths, And I picture, okay, not doing the retreat path where I hold space for women. And I picture, okay, I go this way and I just go completely into coaching and coaching speakers. And that, although I love doing, and that's good. I love the synergy of a group. Yeah. And so the path feels warmer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I just got this one. Oh, you did. Yeah. Goosebump alert. Goosebump alert. (laughs) That may have to be the title of this episode. Goosebump alert. Yeah. It, it's like one feels warm and inviting and the other one feels like, I don't know if the word perfunctory is the right word. It just feels practical. Yeah. It's good. It's fine. But is it what I'm truly called to? Yeah. Ultimately. It, that, that discernment is really important. That okay. discernment is really, really important. And what happens a lot of times is, is that we dismiss the Okay. So you said it feels warm. Mm. People, a lot of times will experience it in different extrasensory ways. So yours was, um, clairsentience where you're actually feeling the warmth, right? It feels Mm. warmer, or you might've seen a warmer light Mm. or some people hear like, uh, 
<laughs> on a good path and a, on a bad path. You know what I mean? Like it's interesting. You know, it's yeah. Different for everybody. Yeah. And that is why it's so important to make it a consistent practice because it's just like a relationship. Like you are getting to know your intuition. Mm. You're getting to know your intuition, which means you can't show up once a month and have a conversation with your intuition. You need to be like sitting down with your intuition every day, multiple times a day, if you can. And it takes moments. It's not like, it's not like this thing that is going to take 30 minutes in the morning and you have to add it to your already busy morning routine. It's not like you could do this in two minutes. And when it comes to something exactly like you're, like you're talking about, I mean, there's these two paths and you have a very clear, like this one actually feels true, truer for me, mm. not right. Or neither of them are right or wrong, right? It's like, this one feels truer for me yeah. and how my life force wants to express in this world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so you have that piece of it and you receive that feeling, right? You receive that from your intuition. Yep. You can continue to move forward. Or what you can do is you can just simply develop a trust for that. Mm -hmm. And that is like such an obscure thing. Like, well, how do you develop a trust for that piece of it? Mm -hmm. You don't dismiss it. You don't talk down about it. You don't write it off as being some fantasy. You come back to your intuition, have another conversation about it, about it later. And each time you're having this conversation with your intuition, you're building a rapport, which sounds kind of funny, but you're building a rapport between you and your own intuition. Mm. Now your intuition isn't going to be as quiet as it was before, because now it knows it's going to be heard that it wants to be heard. So you call, you, you call it for into you, you call it forward. You ask a question, what path you listen to the answer and you are grateful for that answer. Be grateful, be thankful, express it verbally, which might feel a little bit weird to some people expressing it verbally. Thank you so much for that guidance. And I'm so glad you're here. Um, that is a really good way for you to develop a rapport with your intuition so that then it's more accessible to you. Talk to it. Like it's a friend. Okay, so is that how I talk? I mean, so I, I come from a God perspective. So I, you're literally, I could use the words God and intuition interchangeably in the way you just described that. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? Um, how do I frame this? Because I'm also acutely aware of that's the name I've given it because that's what I've been conditioned to see it as, right? Mm -hmm. um, because my conditioning also would never put elevate me above God, mm -hmm. right? So it feels again like, ooh, wait a minute. Uh, am I putting myself and my intuition and, and edging God out of the equation? And I really do feel like it's a co-collaborative process. So and everyone's belief systems are different. And, and that is, there's room for all of that. That's the beauty. Mm -hmm. That's to me, the magnificence is <laughs> there's room for all of it. It's all possible. There yeah. isn't just one way here. So is that making sense what I'm saying? And yeah. is that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and so if we're thinking, thinking, if we're, if we're feeling as though God is all that is right, mm -hmm. let's, if we can kind of put a definition around it that no, it, all of it's undefinable, but all that is right. Yeah. Yeah. And you in your humanness are part of all that is right. Yes. So you, there's a communion that happens between you and the universe, you and source, you and God, there's this communion that's in, you can't undo the, you know, it's, it's always there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so when it comes to your intuition, like your source is all that is, and your yeah. intuition is like a channel that's, that is relevant to you out of all that is. It's like access to what is relevant to your core desires. Yeah. And what you came here in this life to experience at the core, not like the little, the tangible things you experience, but what you desire to experience at your core, your intuition is the channel of all that is into your specific desires. Like speaking my language in a way, because we all have a unique 
language. And I'm using Mm -hmm. that term very loosely. We all have a unique way of knowing Mm -hmm. and feeling. Okay. Oh, that makes so much sense. Yes. No, that, that makes sense. And that's why we all experience differently. And there is no one size fits all equation Mm -hmm. on how to connect to this. And it is a completely individual exploration to determine it because what's yours isn't mine Yeah, necessarily. Right. No, mm-hmm. that makes so much sense. Okay. And I want to, I want to also give you a little bit, like, this is another important thing to know is like, your intuition is a wise sage, like calm, unbiased, totally neutral. Mm. So if there's like negative charge, if you have, a, if you ask a question and there's negative charge or highly positive charge, it's likely not your intuition. Interesting. Intuition is a very neutral answer. Now, that doesn't mean after you get the answer, if it's really good news, like if you were hoping that that was your path, you can't get super excited about it, right? Like that's how I feel like my goosebumps happen. Mm. It's like I receive this neutral feeling. It's exciting. It expresses as goosebumps in my physiology. Mm. Um, so, but on the, uh, it's it's very neutral. It's like, so if we're, th- if we're, explain it in the context of like, you're with a group of friends, they want to go to this restaurant across town and you get this kind of gut feeling like, mm, I don't really feel like this is a good idea. No, I, I'm going to pass, but you don't have any really logical explanation for it, but it's just a feeling that's mm-hmm. likely your intuition. But if instead they say that and you're like, oh my gosh, my ex might be there. And I don't think, what if I run into him and like, there's going to be drama that's not your intuition. Like <laughs> that's not your intuition. If there's charge, if there's drama, if there's anything like that associated with it, that's the mind. Oh, it's wow. Your intuition. So intuition is always neutral. And there's this, an, another tool, like that's one of the things I love is that like there's tools to help you hone it in. And there's this one tool that's like a neutrality gauge. And you can, when you're, even when you're walking on this path, like pull up a neutrality gauge, like, picture a neutrality gauge, however you want it to look, but you know, I picture it as like a speedometer mm-hmm. where the top going straight up and down is neutral and mm-hmm. to the left is a negative charge to the right is a positive charge or however you want to do it. Yeah. And ask your intuition, like, or just pull up the neutrality gauge and see where that path is actually landing on your neutrality gauge. Because you can be excited about something and if it's right, the rightness of it, if it's true, the trueness of it is neutral mm. because it's true. It's not like, well, oh, this is the most exciting thing in the world, blah, 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 blah. That comes after the truth of it. Wow. Well, it feels a little abstract, but I hope that makes sense. No, that's okay. I mean, that that's the whole point of this conversation is even if it's abstract, we can all sit with something. I mean, I just trust the process. We're all sitting here right now, taking this in, whoever, wherever they're listening, they're walking, they're driving their car, they're in their kitchen, they're putting on their makeup, whatever it is. It's okay. We can just sit with this and receive it. And I just absolutely do believe in the concept along the lines of that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So when something is brought to our attention or an idea, even if it's abstract, it's okay. It's a seed planted and somebody right now is resonating and jiving and going, yes, preach to this. Yes, Cara. Yes to that. And then other people like, I don't know what the F she's talking about. That's all of that is good. Every bit of it. Hello. Welcome to this audience because we're all in this together. Yeah. (laughs) Right. You know, and so it's all okay. It's all okay, people. It's all okay. And I would love to just really quickly speak to business specifically, why I think it's so important to bring it into business. Please. Yeah. So when I first started, so I have a long corporate background, strategic leadership and marketing, and I transitioned into um, a consulting, private consulting capacity in 2017 but it was referral based. And then I had to move over to, I wanted to, I felt called to move over to um, female entrepreneurs, supporting female entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got the strategy stuff. I got the, you know, I know how to build a business. I've built 
the last big consulting client I had hit seven figures from the ground up. Like I know how to, how to do this kind of stuff. And I thought it was going to be a slam dunk. And I struggled. I struggled so hard because I came into this new environment where everybody was like, you should do it this way. You should do it this way. You should do it this way. And I'm like, okay, which way am I going to try first? So I didn't even ask myself. And what happened is I started creating something that was not an expression of my essence Mm. because I was now creating under someone else's framework. And again, I, I don't know if I said this earlier, I think it's still incredibly valuable to go and get support from other people for inspiration. As long as you always come back to how you yourself individually need to be uniquely expressed. So that was what I was starting to notice about myself and everybody else I was interacting with. I was in this really high level coaching program and I was noticing like there was a ton of really intelligent, really capable women who were having the same struggles as me. And it was this situation where I noticed that we were trying to compromise ourselves and our true expression of our own essence to fit into someone else's box of like, this is what it's supposed to look like. And what a disservice, like, what, what do you mean now you're going to take all this gem of who you are and try to like chisel it down to this little tiny square that fits into someone else's necklace, you know what I mean? Right. It just didn't feel right. And so I was in this coaching program and there was something that started to shift in the program. This is another, um, anyway, I'll, I'll say it first. So there was this shift in the program. It was a year-long program, like multiple five figures, pretty expensive program. Four months in, the coach is like, I'm going to pivot. I need everybody to sign new agreements. And we're going to move forward with a 2.0 version of this. And I'm like, looked at how it looked. And something in me was like, this is not right. This is not right. So there was a little bit of a struggle, but because there was so much change to the curriculum, I was able to legally get out of the contract. Wow. After I got out, the people that I had made relationships with that were in there were like, I should have left when you left because Mm -hmm. everything is different now. Like it's Mm -hmm. nowhere near the same. And so what I had noticed in that situation, well, first I was trusting my intuition, but The other thing that I had noticed is that everybody there was trying to fit themselves into her box. Mm. And when her box changed was when it was like, this isn't actually what I'm supposed to be doing. And then getting out of the program, they all now have this like hindsight of, I was doing all these things that weren't right for me. And so that's why some of the the people there are in my, my program now that I'm working with to really hone their intuition so they can build something they freaking love and adore. Yeah. And not just something that looks like what everybody else has, because what value does that add to the world? Right. Mm -hmm. That's yes. Yes to that. Yes to that. Because yeah, it's what we love and adore and we feel we are meant to bring to the world as opposed to, yes, I can make money that way. Yes. I'm actually decent and good at it, Mm -hmm. but it just doesn't feel like, yeah, but this is what I'm supposed to bring. And this is what it can give. And it's just this is how I want to express it. Right. Yes. This is the the way I want to feel when I'm doing it. So it's like, if there's a strategy that you don't like, Rick and throw it out. Don't do it. Like that's a compromise to your energy. We can't have that when we're trying to build energetically healthy brands, you know? So that's, that's why I really love what I do because it's like, I'm helping women come back to what is true for you. And then once you find that you've got, you've got someone who's got your back with figuring out the strategy to get there on your terms, the way you want to get there, feeling the way you want to feel getting there. So it's like seeing seeing women actually follow that yeah. is really, is really essential to us bringing order and balance to the world, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. women who are fully expressed. Yeah. Well, and imagine what that can do for the world when people are working and doing things that feel that way, men mm-hmm. or women, any human being, mm-hmm. right? The ripple effect. Yeah. yeah, it's really, I can see the power of that and what that can create. It's and about- there's 
Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm thinking about everyone. I'm thinking about the non-binary person. I'm thinking about that they don't have to now fit into this socially approved box, mm -hmm. but they have a beautiful gift. They have something they're bringing to the table in their creativity, in their expression, in the work they do, but because they have to keep bringing it back to, it keeps wanting to expand and then they have to keep bringing it back to the box that is digestible that people can can take. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. no, we're missing out on so much if that's what yeah. we keep doing. Yeah. We're missing out on so much. You know, diversity is so important to me. And I don't mean just like diversity of culture, or diversity of religion, but like diversity of expression. Yeah. And nature favors that. That's what helps the world expand is the yeah. diversity. And so like that's another big part of why I do it is because I don't want this like homogenous, like to look out into the world and this is homogenous view of everything that's the same. It's like, let me see your uniqueness. Let me see the diversity that naturally exists mm. without the confines of this like conditioned behavior, this conditioned path. Yeah. And that just like, I don't, that piece of it really lights me up is the diversity of human expression and how we are, especially if we're, if we are allowing our, our essence to flow through us naturally, which is what we're all wanting to do. Right. It's like, imagine how diverse and beautiful, like it's, I, I just, I see it like, and it's mind blowing mm -hmm. how gorgeous and enriching it is to be around that type of diversity. Yeah. And that's what I go back to that feminine leadership collective keeps coming back to me and going leadership feminine leadership. And when I say the feminine, the feminine shows up in all of us, wherever you are on the, on, um, on the gender spectrum. Okay. Feminine can show up in a lot of wonderful ways and it shows up in, and, and displays itself in its splendor so differently. And how do we create space and hold space for all of those expressions? Because if you looked at, if you just looked up feminine leadership, and or the conventional wisdom in the culture on feminine leadership and how that looks. A, it probably looks very masculine, which is counterintuitive. But B, it also, yeah, it, it, it fits a box. Mm -hmm. And then that that to me is it shuts things down. So what if it could be a collective? It's just a collection of all kinds of forms of leadership, even if it's self-leadership, even if it's like I said earlier, it, it's the mom who advocates for her neurodiverse kid mm -hmm. is yeah. exhibiting her form of feminine leadership to the woman who holds one of the highest offices in the land and what her what she brings to that office out of her feminine intuition, let's say, yeah. or to the women who. Oh my God, I'm just picturing um, the the women who were fleeing with their babies from Ukraine. And in Poland, I think it was, I, and tell me if you saw this snapshot on Instagram, it gives me shivers right now. Those women went to the train stations and left empty prams and empty strollers so that these sisters who are getting off with their babies in a foreign land because they were fleeing had a stroller. Wow. Like yeah, I am shivering yeah. all over as I think of that's feminine leadership. Mm -hmm. It is. Right? And I, could, I could go crazy. Yeah. And, and to like, to also be clear, it's like having and honoring your feminine leadership doesn't mean you dismiss the max, like masculine, you need the balance. Right. But oh, we, yeah. we're, we've been so imbalanced. And so like, it's the honoring of both, but because we're so out of balance on the feminine side, it's like really anchoring into that piece of it and making sure that the women around, like we're influencing the other women around us who need to see that feminine leadership as a spark for them to now bring that balance back into their lives. So yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I, I'm, thank you for making that distinction. This is not about um, feminine at the, um, at the smashing of and destruction of anything masculine. That, that's not what this is at all. Yeah. If anything, okay. this is a celebration of every bit of it. Mm -hmm. It is a, well, it, it's a force that's creating welcome and that one does not have to supersede the other. One does not have to unseat the other. 
right? I mean, especially within a, in patriarchal settings where the neg- that it could be such a negative charge towards the masculine. I love yeah. that space. Okay, back to that beautiful space of neutrality. Yeah. Of just that this yeah. is a beautiful place right here of balance and it's all welcomed and it's all good if it is bringing out what is in our essence Mm -hmm. and standing in full support of it. Really well said, I love that. Yeah, oh my gosh, I I, could could talk to you for 75 hours today. (laughs) Same. I so, on and on. Yeah, this is this is not going to end. Um, oh, I have some ideas. Maybe, maybe I have some ideas for another episode. So we will talk about that. Um, mm-hmm. We'll make that a cliffhanger, y'all. Kara, <laughs> thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you for just um, trusting me with this mm-hmm. time and your work that I know means so much to you. And um, I'm just grateful to you. I'm grateful for your friendship too. And just your sisterhood. I love you so much. Thank you, Jen. I love you too. I'm so happy that we were able to talk about this and share our conversation because we had so many great conversations that were just between us and now we get to share it. And and I love it. It expanded me. I hope it expanded you. Oh, it did. It did. It did. Yes. All right, everybody. So glad we were here together. Thanks for being in the conversation and you know, it's what just struck me. It's not, sometimes it's not enough to just have a seat at the table or a seat on the couch. It's about engaging in the conversation and sharing what's real and true to you and giving it voice. And I hope this is a part of that for you today. I really do. That's, that's, that, that would make my whole day. Until we meet next week. Oh, thanks for being here. Continue to listen for real and I'll see you next episode. Bye guys. Bye. Listen for Real is produced in Rockland, California and is edited and mixed with the help of Mark Edward. Our music entitled Zero is written and performed by Shannon Curtis. If you believe conversations like these belong in the world, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And even better, share it with someone else as a real conversation starter. We'll see you next time.